Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. I want to talk to you about being an example, and I think that that's actually one of the most powerful way to provide leadership. I know that sometimes we think we need to just tell everything, but sometimes, folks, the best way to teach people is to show them. This is why the the great men and women of old would pray and pray and pray because they understood they could not come to people with just persuasive words of human wisdom, but they had to come with a demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. Uh, Paul says this, of course, but I remember David Breinhardt, a wonderful missionary in a long time ago, I think in the 1800s, that he was sent by the Lord Jesus to the American Indians. Of course, he didn't speak their language and he was a young man because he passed away, I think, before he became 30. But he went and, you know, went out into those forests there in North America and horseback and rode through all of the heat and ever the swamps and everything that was coming his way. It was not an easy road to travel to find those Indians. And when he would find them, all he had to work through was a pagan, unskilled, ungodly interpreter. Not, the man wasn't born again yet, but that's all he had. And he understood that he could not come to them with just mere words because they would not just believe him if he came with mere words. He had to come to them with power from the Holy Spirit. In other words, that the people could see in him what he was talking about. And, and he would weep and travail and pray. One of his greatest prayer was, O oh Lord, that I may know a greater mortification. In other words, that I'm dead to self, that it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives. O oh Lord, show me and teach me, Lord, to be dead to self. All I have in this life is to labor in it for you. And he would pray and pray and pray and pray while he was traveling on horseback. And, and oh, how the Lord would come to him graciously by his Holy Spirit and empower him to see a total transformation in all those Indian tribes and they would become truly born again, spirit-filled, loving Jesus, loving the Word of God. It was miraculous. And this is what I'm talking about, being an example. And so I want to read to you from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, okay? Paul says here to Timothy, who was like David Brainerd, a young man, let no one despise your youth, <clears throat> but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in attitude, in love, in spirit, the spirit you bear, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by the prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. That everybody can see, wow, I look at him. He's changing, he's growing, he's maturing. I listen to him and it's more clean, it's more pure, it's more true, it's more real, it's real to him. You know, it's hard to convince people of things that's not real to you. The Apostle Paul, he wrestled with those teachers that would come, but were not inwardly transformed, were not inwardly alive to God, so they would speak about it, but it was not real to them. And the Apostle Paul says, they say they're servants of Christ, but they don't know him inwardly. And you see, this is the power of being an example. Paul would write to the Roman church, I think. He says, I'm ready to preach Christ to you as much as is in me. In another place in Corinthians, I think he says, every time I begin to share, G uh, he says, the reason you received me is because when I began to talk to you about Jesus, God anointed me with the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? That means that God himself bears witness of what you are saying, that it's true. It's like Acts chapter 10, while Peter was talking about Jesus, God 
poured out his Holy Spirit on all of Cornelius' house and they heard them speaking in tongues. And Peter says, who is here to keep you from being water baptized when you have received the same gift as we had, even though there were no visible flames, the flame was in them. It was the same Holy Spirit. And you see, it is talking about being an example that God himself will work with you to cause you to be a good example to others. Believe this. And you may say, you know, Pastor Robert, this is exactly what I struggle with. I feel I fail at being a good example. I have a bad attitude. I get angry. I get irritated. I, I, I you know, I get so angry. Well, hello. We've all been there. This is all part of our own journey. Me too. I mean, I've kicked myself sometimes for being a bad example, but that will not change anything. It's the Lord himself who by his Holy Spirit transforms us and makes us an example. Believe this. Come on. Maybe you say, I've not been a good example to my family. I've had bad attitudes. I've been negative. I've been complaining. Come on. Come to the Lord Jesus. Say, Lord, wash me. Wash me, Lord. The Bible says you're saved by being washed inwardly, by being made new through the Holy Spirit inwardly. Holy Spirit will wash you clean. Take a good shower, so to speak. Let the Holy Spirit wash you clean with the blood of Jesus and your attitude will change, I promise you. Your attitude will change. You'll become bright and shining and light and happy and positive and optimistic and you become an example. For me, I have to get up early in the morning or I'll, or I'll make a mess of it. So I get up early in the morning, I read my Bible for a little while and I pray for a little while and that's what, what does it for me. I need that time with the Lord. So if you say, I've not been a good example, well, don't write yourself off now. Come on now, that would be pride to say, oh, I just can't change, I'm just too this. No, don't believe that. Jesus is raised from the dead. And Jesus has the power to give life to the dead. If you are dead in some area, he will give life where you're dead. And he will make you a phenomenal example of love, a phenomenal example of purity. A phenomenal example of kindness. What is it? Be an example to the believers in conduct. He will make you a phenomenal example in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity, in giving attention to reading the Bible and so forth, and letting the gift that God's given you begin to shine more consistently. Now let me close with you in Acts chapter 20, starting at verse 17. The Apostle Paul was on his way to Jerusalem, to be there in time for Pentecost. And so he, he contacted the leaders of the church of Ephesus and asked them to meet him about 30 miles down the road in a place called Miletus, okay? So from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church, it says here in verse 17. And when they had come to him, he said to them, you know from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I always lived among you serving the Lord Jesus with all humility, with many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews, how I kept nothing back that was helpful and proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house. And that's what I just wanted to say. Be a good example. People know, people know how you live. People know how you live. You don't have to tell everybody, oh, I do this, I do that. People know it. They see it over time. Sometimes if you maybe don't have the reputation you desire, you need to just keep giving yourself to Jesus and he will give you a reputation if you just choose to be a good example of him, of his life, of his love, and of his peace. And God needs to sometimes work that for you. I have had places where I just wasn't acknowledged. I wasn't received. And if I would allow myself to be busy with that, then I would constantly hurt myself. But I just committed it to God and he's changed it. When I came to Folkson uh, with Virginia to start this church in 1989, I knew I would be misjudged for doing this because I had had a crusade here a long time before and I thought people are gonna think that I schemed it all when I knew nothing. I'd never thought it would be Folkson where the Lord would have me start, but the Lord spoke to me directly and told me, to start the church. So I said to the Lord, Lord, 
I'll be misunderstood, but I'll leave that to you. And God took care of it. He took care of it. And I tell you, you, you just leave it to God and He'll take care of it. Have a good day.